Are you a B2B marketeer? Then you have to listen to what Soviet-born American entrepreneur Gary Vaynerchuk had to say this morning. The ability to be a media company or a content creator for your business is as required as paying your taxes and knowing how to manage your cash flow. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the POD Pick of Destiny podcast. It is the show that brings to you all the emerging trends from the field of marketing. My name is Vivek Vinayak and every week we bring to you one emerging trend and analyze it to see how it is going to influence marketers in the next decade. On today's show I'm talking about my favorite subject that is podcasts for the B2B segment and earlier in the day I had the privilege of interviewing some of the veterans from the field of marketing especially James Carabray the founder of Sweet Fish Media who specializes in podcast for the B2B segment and he was telling me how the B2B podcasts are raking in big numbers in the Apple podcast industry B2B growth is a top 100 marketing podcast in Apple podcasts we get 150,000 downloads every month and we've got 19 different co-hosts I also happened to speak to Lindsay Jekkemi, founder of Casted, and she was telling me how podcasting helps a company in internal messaging in the most efficient way. So you're getting like product launches, product rollouts, you know, company updates. Um, if you're delivering that via email, like the open rates are usually pretty low, and you're sending it out typically to a, a remote sales team that is traveling around and moving around, and you're expecting them to sit there in front of a screen. And, and consume this content. What if they could instead just listen to a podcast while they're doing something else? Last but not the least, I also had the opportunity to interview my instructor at Western Continuing Studies, Alison Adair, who also happens to be the marketing and communications manager for WCS, and she was telling me why podcasts are a great way of influencing people, especially on the move. you think about sort of those key decision makers probably spend quite a bit of time traveling and podcasts is a great way to digest information while on the move all this and more coming up on the POD this is the pick of destiny podcast it is the only show which helps you pick your destiny All right then so we're talking about the B2B podcasting and how it is going to change uh, the way B2B business is actually marketed in the next decade we have to understand that the B2B landscape is ever changing it has become super dynamic rich in opportunities but with the opportunities has also come with it its range of challenges and one challenge the sector has always faced in the recent years is that the rising expectations of uh, today's b2b buyer now as a result businesses have had to adapt provide superior experiences to drive brand awareness increase customer loyalty and keep internal employees satisfied and that is what today's podcast is going to speak about of how b2b podcasting creating a podcast for your brand can actually influence and drive sales for your b2b business now earlier in the day a soviet born american entrepreneur a gary vaynerchuk who's an internet personality and entrepreneur who's a who's a great thought leader had to say some really great things about podcasting and why he believes that every business should start a podcast of their own uh, listen in this is really insightful if you start the st louis business podcast show and then you spend 5 hours dming emailing and reaching out to all the other business owners in st louis and inviting them to be on your podcast named the st louis business podcast you by just taking the initiative have flipped the leverage and now we'll have much bigger business owners than you interested on being on your podcast through that you will build general awareness in your region and you will build reputation as a top of the funnel lead gen to what you actually do the show is about the entrepreneurial or local dynamics the awareness you get from it 
will allow them to figure out what you do for a living, which will lead to biz dev. Ooh, those are some really strong words by Gary there. Do you think he's pushing the limit by saying that podcasting and content creation is as important as understanding taxes? Well, I'm a podcast specialist and I can tell you that it's one of the best ways to connect with an individual on a one-on-one basis. And uh, that's what corporates are doing nowadays. Sending emails, dropping a letter or giving a phone call are passe. Corporates now are creating podcasts to drive internal messages to their employees. This means that they can talk about product demos, presentation, brand ethos, um, understanding uh, the next sales pitch through a podcast, and they can do this on the go. And to talk to us more about this, I'm joined in by my guest for today, Lindsay Jack Kempe, who's the founder of Casted. Casted is a company that specializes in creating podcasts for corporate and uh, she specializes in the B2B podcast industry. Thank you so much for joining us, Lindsay. To start things off, I want to ask you, why are corporates actually using podcasts for internal messaging and uh, what are the benefits of actually using podcasts uh, as a way of driving internal messages to your employees in a company? Uh, if, If someone is in sales at a very, very large company and they're used to getting either things in the mail that they immediately tend to dump in the trash um, or if they're getting uh, and this is all again all internal so you're getting like product launches product rollouts you know company updates um, if you're delivering that via email the open rates are usually pretty low and you're sending it out typically to a, a remote sales team that is traveling around and moving around and you're expecting them to sit there in front of a screen and, and consume this content what if they could instead just listen to a podcast while they're doing something else so we're, we're seeing a lot more um, interest around internal podcasts and getting creative there. Um, and then how can the podcast content be used across lots of other channels um, to get much more value out of it and to reach different audiences in different ways? Well, that sounds cool. Uh, I'd rather listen to a podcast about uh, a product presentation or a demo of a product training than uh, read an email, which is, I mean, it's my email inbox is filled with, I don't know how many unread emails, right? So I think this is a great way of actually driving a message. But tell me, you know, if you're doing a podcast for entertainment or for infotainment, it's it's a different way of, of promoting. But how do you promote an internal podcast? Do you send messages? Uh, do you do kind of tell people on a book? meeting what is the appropriate way of actually promoting a podcast for a corporate organization as an internal message it's not to me it's not about promoting that show it's not about promoting that episode it's about promoting the conversation the expert that expert voice so how do you do that well yes we have a podcast we're going to go to social media and say this episode is live and if there's a video that goes with it this video is also live cross promote between the two if you want to see the video version of this if you want to listen to the audio version of this but then then what so how do you turn that show into written content and then people who are subscribed to your blog how do you again cross promote so you're reading this if you want to actually see or hear this interview go here um we also, if you're casted, uh, clipping is, is a big part of it um, where you can very, we've talked about this, you can very easily pull clips. But part of that is um, on the show page that's created in casted is uh, clips that are kind of like the Cliff's Notes version, the sweet and condensed version of the show. So you can kind of click around and just listen to bits and pieces. And so by promoting those clips, um, one would hope that someone would come in, listen to that clip and say, oh, I want to listen to this other clip too. And while I'm here, I'm just going to stay and listen to the whole show. That is a very cool feature. I think even YouTube has a similar feature where you can actually trim a part of a video or a podcast and share only that part to your friends and family through any medium, through messages, messenger, WhatsApp, whatever you feel like, uh, so that people don't have to watch an entire video. And that's a pretty cool way of actually promoting a particular podcast. And I'm sure it's got a very high shareability factor. But I think the big question for every business is what is the financial benefits of actually creating a podcast? Is this effort driving revenue to the company? And to talk to us more about that, I've got with me James Carabre, founder of Sweetfish Media. He's also a person who specializes in creating podcasts for the B2B industry. James, thank you so much for joining us. And uh, that's the big question everybody asks, including myself. Can podcasts actually drive revenue in the B2B industry? What are your thoughts? So I I think what I would want to hear is not just the benefit of 
building trust with listeners and the and the people consuming the content um, because I, there's there's business results that happen from people hearing your episodes week after week or day after day depending on what the uh, what the cadence is of your show um, because I, I immediately get skeptical about like yeah but how many people are actually going to listen to this thing it's it's on this very niche topic are enough people going to listen to it for it to actually drive a business result. And so that's where on the why I think podcasting is so powerful is it's not just about the audience and the relationship you can build with an audience. It is about the one-to-one relationship that you can build with decision makers at your target accounts. So I think if you're talking to your CEO and you're saying, hey, you know, we we have our 100 target accounts that, you know, myself as a marketing leader and our and our sales leader are aligned on. What if we had this medium that would allow us to go to specific people at these at these 100 companies and ask them to be a guest on the show because we've branded the show around the industry and not about our own expertise? Um, I think me as a CEO, I go, okay, that, that makes a lot of sense to me because regardless of whether six people or 600 people listen to this, if it still allows us to, to uh, a, way, a foot in the door with decision makers at our target accounts, then it's worth at least experimenting to see if, to see if it can drive uh, results uh, in terms of revenue. Oh, James, that's a really cool point you mentioned there because I know a lot of people like to share their opinions and they'd like to be heard. Uh, it's, it's kind of an ego boost for them. And uh, if this podcast is catering to decision makers in, in a particular company or in a particular account that you're handling, then a podcast can be really a game changer in uh, kind of driving business and revenue. So it's something that businesses have to pay more attention towards because you might just be missing out on the on, on the pie here in terms of uh, a large uh, kind of benefit of doing podcasts as a way of reaching your accounts and your targeted businesses and the decision makers. Um, but, you know, we understand that in podcasts, it's, it's kind of easy to measure how many people you are reaching if you are trying to do an entertainment podcast or an infotainment podcast or just a podcast in general. But how do we measure the results in a B2B podcast? Because we understand that the initial numbers are not going to be very big. You are not going to reach millions and millions of people. This could be a podcast just specifically targeting the internal employees or, or a group of stakeholders. Uh, to talk to us more about the measurement of B2B podcasts, I'm joined in by Jeremy Sherry. He's the founder of Converse Podcasting. It's also a company that specializes in creating podcasts for the B2B industry. Jeremy, what is the way uh, to kind of measure the success uh, of, of podcasting for the B2B industry? What are the differences between podcast, uh, podcasting in general and podcasting for the B2B industry? And how do you actually differentiate in terms of measuring the success in this particular activity? The way to measure the success of a podcast is by downloads. I think that that metric is very different if you're a B2B marketer and you're doing podcasting than if you're doing podcasting to just sort of reach, you know, as many listeners as possible anywhere. If your show is mainly for entertainment, then pretty much the sole indicator of whether you're succeeding or not is how many people are we attracting to this podcast. For B2B marketers, it's it's a little bit different. You're doing a very niche podcast if you're doing a B2B podcast. Right? You are aiming it at a very particular audience. So you're trying to capture the biggest percentage of that audience you can. But in raw numbers, it's not going to be anything like the most popular podcast in the world. Just get like millions of listeners. Have a sense of your audience and kind of a sense of your potential audience out there. So you might be getting... 150 regular listeners per episode, let's say. And in raw numbers, that might not seem like a lot, but it all depends on the context. That means every single time you put in, put out an episode, getting 150 people, the exact people who are your audience that you're providing services for, who are tuning in to hear what you have to say and what your guests have to say. So there's a different way of thinking about it. So, But in any case, that's just one way of measuring. Another way of measuring the value is 
the content that you're generating from the podcast. All right, that's that's uh, pretty insightful. Uh, you know, uh, I, I also understand that you are a company that uh, kind of does podcasts for clients and kind of sets up an entire podcast uh, movement in corporates. So, what do corporates get uh, apart from just being on a podcast in terms of content? We understand that uh, through a podcast, a company can really generate more content in terms of social media content or in terms of blog posts, in terms of uh, just you know picking up ghostwriting articles. So what are the deliverables that you offer clients when they come to you and tell you, Jeremy, I want to start a podcast. So uh, what can they expect from you? So for every episode, they get the audio episode. We record some video for them. So they also take that video and repurpose it as promotional content. And then they turn, they're turning every episode into at least one blog post and a bunch of social media content. So for this particular client, the main value lies in the fact that it's a content generation engine, and it helps them produce content much more efficiently than they were doing before. Well, that means podcasts can be a content generation machine. Through a podcast, you can actually create content for social media, create blog posts, kind of generate uh, quotes from the podcast. And if a company has limited resources, I think a podcast can be a fantastic way of communication. But having said that, I think podcasts also come um, with a lot of responsibility. It, it's got a, you've got to have a team, you've got to have a person who has a fantastic content strategy, who knows this industry, who understands sound really well. Um, and uh, to talk to us more about uh, the requirements to create a successful podcast, I'm joined in by my instructor at uh, the Western Continuing Studies uh, Marketing Program. That is Alison Adair. Thank you so much, Alison, for joining us. She's also the Marketing and Communications Manager at WCS. I know, Alison, that you have been trying for many years now to start a podcast for WCS, but uh, that's not really happened. But what do you think is the perfect formula to start a successful marketing podcast? Um, and, and what do you think are the important resources for that? So whether a podcast is a cost-effective uh, tool for marketing, it's a great question. Um, and one I find kind of hard to answer. I think it could be. Um, I would love to launch a podcast for Western Continuing Studies. In fact, it's been on our list for a few years and it keeps getting pushed down every time I evaluate it, mainly because I have to look at my budget, I have to look at resources, and I need to be realistic in terms of it being right for us at the moment. Can we do this well? And at the moment, we can't. And that's not just about cost. It's also about resource and taking time away from other initiatives to be able to do this. Um, I think in order to do a podcast in a business to business um, field within that industry, I think you need to have expertise in podcasting. You need equipment. You need a really, really solid content strategy. Who's going to host it? What are you going to talk about? What is your theme? Um, who are your guests? How often are you going to do this? How are you going to get it out to people? Um, you know, and if you had all of this in place, um, I think then it could be a cost effective tool and a really excellent uh, marketing communication initiative. We're talking about resources. If you want a podcast host, if you want a podcast production manager, you are in the right direction, Alison, because uh, Vivek Vinayak will come to your rescue. The POD, the Pick of Destiny podcast, is also here to help businesses set up their own podcast in their uh, organization. We offer services, everything from a podcast host to production services to arranging of guests for your podcast. Uh, we are a one-stop solution for all your podcast needs. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, that is the end of today's podcast. I hope you guys had an insightful episode. Uh, don't forget to subscribe our social media handles and subscribe us on YouTube as well as uh, Spotify. We are also available on Apple Podcasts uh, on our next episode we will come back with one more marketing trend and see how it's going to fare in the next decade for young marketeers thank you so much for listening to the POD Pick of Destiny Podcast it is a podcast that helps you pick your destiny hey!